Last time, we asked the question whether narrative, like story that you find in the Gospels, should be interpreted or read differently, that is, with different principles or rules than the way you read epistles or poetry or proverbs, and we answered that it's a misleading question in a sense because you have to do the reading before you know you have narrative, which means that principles of reading or interpretation precede and are decisive by attending to what words and arrangements of words and indicators an author gives us how he wants to be understood. And it never is sufficient to say, okay, we have a genre, like we have story or we have poetry, or more sophisticated, we have apocalyptic. And therefore, because we have this, now we know how everything works in this text. And I think that's very dangerous, very misleading, and does not allow the author to be decisive. The author can, halfway through his poem or his story or his so-called apocalyptic genre give you a clue, hey, don't do that anymore. Don't, don't presume that you know what I'm doing here. I'm telling you I'm doing something fresh. I'm doing something different. And therefore, the way the author puts things together is always decisive, even though he may signal that he's doing a certain genre and wants you to have certain expectations that is never absolutely decisive in how you interpret a piece of text. So now let's try to see some of this in the first six verses of John 11. Father, guide us now. We want to see what's really here. We want to see what John is doing. We won't We don't want to bring any preconceived notions here as to how he should tell his story or how he should teach or not teach or how he should write or not write. We want to listen and see and see and see what you have caused him to really put here. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus, Bethany, of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness is not unto death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha, and her sister, and Lazarus. So, when he heard that he was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Now, we want to see uh, what is here, what are the words, and we want to see how he, he put these things together, and we want to see why he did without any preconceived notions of how he has to do it because he's writing a gospel rather than writing an epistle. So let's let's collect as many things as we can here, and then maybe in one more session we'll we'll get at the bigger theological whys. Now a certain man was ill, so we've got a sickness on the horizon here. Actually, it's it's already present. He's sick. That's going to be very, very crucial. And he's just kind of a certain man at first, but now we know he's Lazarus of Bethany. Now, that's the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Now, those names, um, Lazarus, Mary, Martha, are huge for Jesus, and we're going to see why in just a minute. But he's, he's putting out the facts here. Who, who are we talking about? Which Mary is it here? It's the Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother, so now we know that Lazarus is the brother of Mary and Martha. We didn't know that before. And and this man is, uh, his sister Mary is the one 
who anointed Jesus with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair. Now, that hasn't even been told yet in this gospel. It's going to be told in 12.3. So that's really strange that Jesus would, uh, I mean, John would assume that his readers know what he's talking about. Or, or maybe he's assuming that you're reading it for the second time or something like that. But, and probably he does assume this story is so famous. Jesus said the story is so famous it would be told wherever the gospel is preached. So maybe, maybe it is that well known. But the point is, why, why would he put it here? He's, he's selecting it. He's, he's chosen it from something that came later. And, and why would he do it? And perhaps because... Uh, The fact that she wiped his feet with her hair and she chose some precious ointment to do it means there's some significant affection, love that's to be thought of here, which is in fact what we're going to see confirmed. So, the sisters sent to him saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. All right, so now this, this... affection that seemed to be working here in pointing out that she had wiped his feet with her hair and put anointing. So there's significant affection that's underlined here with this word love. You love Lazarus. This is a family that's special to you, Lord, and he's sick, so come. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness is not going to lead to death. It is for the Glory of God. So glory of God is introduced along with the heavy duty emotion of love. So that the Son of God may be glorified. So now you have the glory of the Father, glory of God, and the glory of the Son of God. So glory is clearly important here. So glory seems to be important and love seems to be important. Now, Jesus, oh, here he is again, loved Martha. So this is John saying it, not just Mary and Martha saying it. John is saying he loved Mary and Martha and Lazarus. So all of them. He loved them. Love, love, Love is implied here. Love is explicit here. Love is explicit here. So now you got two big issues in, in this text. Love is here and glory is here. So now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So. Now that really is therefore. So, so means Therefore. You might skip over it too quickly if you didn't know they're the same. Therefore, and what does therefore refer back to? He loved them, right? That's the most immediate thing he said. He loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Therefore, when he heard that he was sick, he didn't go. He stayed two days longer, and we learn he died. And later, They know this happened. Martha said to Jesus, verse 21, Lord, if you'd been here, he wouldn't have died. That's Martha talking. And now Mary comes out, verse 32. Mary came to where Jesus was and saw. She fell at his feet saying, Lord, if you'd been here, he wouldn't have died. Why weren't you here? And the answer is he chose not to be there. And that's called love. So, because he loves them, therefore he let him die. Now that is reading. That's what we've seen. And the question is, this is the most shocking thing in the text, right? He sets us up here. He sets us up with love. And he sets us up with glory. And then he says, therefore he let him die. And that's what we have to focus on next time. And, and one of the great principles here is, just like in the epistles, this word therefore is proving to be all important, even though this is a narrative.